Next on MLR Weekly, superstar New York Field General Andy Ellis, his better half, and highlights, analysis, and opinion from Brian Ray, Dan Power, and Matt McCarthy. Hello again and welcome to this week's MLR Weekly as presented by Rugby Wrap-Up. Thank you for joining us. Matt McCarthy in New York City. On his way from New York City to Hoboken, New Jersey, it looks like Andy Ellis and his crew. Brian Ray is at Red Bull Arena via Halifax and Dan Power is somewhere in Jersey with Tony Soprano and the crew. Andy, thank you for taking the time. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having us on. Um... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great to be on your show, Matt. And um, yeah, pretty excited to be in a finals week. All right. Dan, you look like Hank Williams. Bo, oh, I'm celebrating New Jersey and Mad Monday. 11 teams are on Mad Monday to remain, and we'll decide it in the great state of New Jersey this weekend. So I wanted to bring it all together with some synergy. So why not with, with my buddy Tony Soprano over here? Okay. But again, you do look like Hank Williams. Fair enough. Brian, this has got to pain you. This is purgatory or hell. I'm not sure which for you. Your flap jackals, your flop jacks are out. And now New York's in against Seattle, and you got Andy Ellis right in your face. Hey, there's nothing wrong with this. New York, everyone knows New York is my third favorite team. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to jump on whatever bandwagon the uh, the league hands you. All right, so Andy, let's get let's cut to the chase. You know, you put on a master class on Sunday up in New England at the number nine position. So maybe, maybe you can play nine a little bit. Maybe maybe ten's not your your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, wherever wherever the team needs me. Um, oh, yeah, what I, an I, I, answer! I love, what an answer! I love, I love playing nine. You know, in the week we had a great week prep. We knew that Boston are an extremely strong strong side. We got a lot of respect for them, and so we were real genuine all week with our prep. Um, and, you know, we went out and delivered a performance that, um, you know, I think we we're really proud of in the end. A, a, real, uh, a real probably sign of the character of the group. So you're, you're a compadre in the back line and a fellow All Black, Mr. Milner Scudder, said to me on the pitch afterwards that he didn't feel like you guys played your best match and that you haven't peaked yet. You know, I, I feel like a little bit in the last month, you know, I feel like we've finally sort of connected on another level and we're... we're um, we've grown our game. Um, uh, mate, I tell you, Nehi's been incredible for our group. He's come in and some of the coaching and the detail that he's implemented, he's, it's been amazing. Like he, he's like a dog with a bone. He, he, he watches all the footage. He um, grab, brings all the boys in. He, he's got the whiteboard up every morning when we walk in and he's saying, you know, this is what we need to be doing. This is how you need to be doing. Coming up with new drills. Mate, it's, it's been amazing. And you can see the whole, the whole group's, Brought in and, and, and got him behind him and um, you know, I think some of that rugby detail has been been spot on just to help us kind of click a bit better. Dan, I could talk for you for hours, mate. You've had an absolutely amazing career. I just want to dive into your mindset going into that game because you know you've achieved so much in the game. You're at the twilight, not only of the day where you're in New York, the sun setting, but <laughs> of your career as well. Not to go over the top here, but if you don't play that game, you, New York doesn't win. And I know you're a humble guy, and you won't admit that. But when they're down, you composed them, brought them back into the game, and got the win. What was your mindset to get up for that game? Outside of oh, I'm a competitor and I want to win for the boys and all that stuff. Like, how did you get ready for that performance? Because it was unbelievable. Well. I've been playing for nearly 20 years professionally now, and I'm coming to my last couple, or my last one now. So to get up for a game like this is it's pretty easy, you know. It's um, ends up being quite emotional weeks, you know. And like I talk to a lot of the boys, and I talk to my family, and everyone's really proud. And you know, sort of every day is special. Every moment is coming towards the end. So individually it's really easy to get up and, and be um, right on right on my game and drive what we need in the team as well um, so yeah I mean I mean that, that, that's from a personal point of view um, as a as a team you know like we, it, we we're just deep we're, we're quite a connected group we really care about each other we've we've done all sorts of things this season to learn about each other's cultures you know like New York's a diverse place as, as the MLR is you know people from all over the world so we know each other's partners and families really well and we care about each other. And so it's kind of bringing all that together in finals weeks and going, and we're not, we're not ready for this to be the last week. You know, we, we need another week together. We care too much about each other. And 
and that's what I talk about when you see kind of that that performance really showed I think the character of the group we we fought real hard and we won little moments and um the messaging was really good and really clear and accurate so uh, you know waffled a bit there but hopefully it gives you a little bit of insight about where we were at you know obviously there's a few uh championships in there but the one I'm interested back in 2008 you're getting ready to play the Waratahs in that final you know looking back at that I mean 14 years ago now what do you take from that experience that you learned way back then that, that you can take into this week heading in towards this final? That's America's rugby news there. Firing away with that question, Andy. Yeah, there's, there's a few things. I don't want to let too many of them out of the bag, obviously, because we've got another final coming up and I don't want Seattle to know what we're going to talk about this week. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's a big show. You know, it just It's about um, enjoying the week together. Um, Preparing well, working hard, uh, and and going out there and not not leaving any sort of stone unturned. You know, going out there and and playing for something bigger than yourself, or, or um, you know, a, a deeper purpose or meaning. That that's that's what I'll say. Today. Ask me this question again next week. I'll give you this different answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the this is the keep it close to the vest answer. All right, hold that thought. We have to break, but we'll be right back. Looking for your next vehicle? With She's Easy Search, choose from over 3,000 new and used vehicles. Shop, trade, or buy online or in store. We make it easy with our award winning service. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle, on West 36th Street. And we're back. Andy Ellis, you talk about how you're getting along, and that emotion on the pitch after the win was real. I saw it firsthand. You guys, it was just, you know, I just wanted to step back and watch. You guys were really a unit in celebrating that from the staff right through. And I even saw Marty Veal smiling. I highly doubt that, but um, no, we were. We, 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 um, we're a connected group, mate. You know, we've um, been through a lot. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a crazy old season coming playing rugby here. You arrive and, there, and there's snow and it's cold and you've got to find ways to train inside or outside or travel or travel an hour and a half to Brooklyn to, to get an indoor spot, spot for an hour and a half and just to get some rugby on board, you know. And it's kind of all part of our journey or story. You know, we've had to go through a lot and um, spend a lot of time together. And, um, you know, that's kind of, I suppose, a bit of a reflection, like you say, when, when, you, when, you, when you win those big, the games or you win those those moments through the game for a reflection of that and care within the group. How do you look at Seattle how you guys match up? Oh, they're class. Seattle are quality opposition. You know, the thing that probably stands out to me is they've been to finals footy a few times, so they know what it tastes like. They know what to feel. Right across their, their forwards and their back line, they've got um, strike power, danger. So we're going to have to prepare well and, and understand what, what sort of game they're going to bring and what we need to do to match that. But no, I, I know that our boys, it's a matter of respect for them. What better way to go and play a final against a team that's, that's won it before and, um, and and they love finals for the Quick last question for Andy, Dan. Yeah, actually, I've got one for Ems, if that's okay. Can, can I ask Mrs. Ellis a question? I want to know how you're feeling because you've been a part of this journey with the family for years and years. Rugby's always dictated where you guys go as a family. How are you feeling in a couple of weeks where you will basically dictate what's the next steps and rugby takes a back seat? Hey, keep your eyes on the road, please. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. That's a hard question. I guess I, I will process it after the game. I'll be feeling nervous before the game. I was beside myself last weekend thinking it might have been his last game. So it will be emotional, but we are ready for the next chapter in our lives, I think. so. I'm going to piggyback that one. Are you saying his last game ever or last game of the season? Are you saying last game ever? I don't want to say anything. You're going to start a domestic game, Matt. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Yeah, no, I'm not. After this weekend, I'm probably – no, I'm not going to put my boots back on again. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you saying you're retiring from New York right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, yeah. After this weekend, that's um, that's us. Yeah, we're, we're going to head back home. Oh, okay. All right, but no next season. No, no, no. no. 
Yes. All right. Okay. Well, that's – we'll work on that. We'll talk about that a little bit, you know, because I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. You have a lot in that tank. Oh, yeah. I mean, I still, I still love competing, but, I mean, I've, I can tell you that that uh, I filled that tank up this year, and I'm, I'm, I'm giving it everything to kind of finish this year off. You know? Fair enough. Save, save a little for that Wagyu. And make sure that you ship some over to Kansas when you get it going. All right, Andy? <laughs> there we go. That's beautiful. Brian, final question for Mr. Ellis. Well, it's, it's been awesome to, to see you play, uh, and it's great to see how you're rubbing off on guys like Connor Buckley, Connor McManus. If you had one piece of advice for a high school kid who wants to play in that uh, World Cup in 2031 for the Eagles, what would it be? Uh, uh, it's a good question. Love your rugby. Um, I reach reach out and 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 get, and get a mentor that's been playing professionally, perhaps overseas as well, to understand the professional side of of, of rugby, or, or in the or that's been playing in the MLR for a decent amount of time. I'm, I'm lucky I've got to spend time with the, the my two young uh, halfbacks who are fantastic young men and have grown immensely in the last kind of couple of years that I've known them anyway and they'll go on and, and be professional rugby players both of them for a long time and no doubt challenge pretty hard for that World Cup squad so but love what you do keep working really hard be surprised how quickly things can turn and change in professional sports so keep giving yourself a chance good stuff well sir it's been a pleasure watching you play getting to talk to you a couple of times and I'm, I'm thankful that you took the time out with your family and thank thanks to the family for allowing this uh, Mr. Andy Ellis, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Maddie, Maddie and your crew too, mate. Uh, fantastic job promoting the sport in, in the States. So, um, I, know that, I know all our guys really appreciate it of it and what a great job you, all three of you do. So um, so thanks for your support as well, mate. And um, can't wait for this weekend. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I'm rooting for you this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. All right. That's Andy Ellis, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Andy. Thank you to all the Ellises. That was cool talking to Andy, but now we got our jobs to talk about the games. And let's start with the Houston-Seattle game. Dan, what was your take on that one? I thought Houston at home probably would have been able to get it done, but credit to Seattle. AJ Alatimu, probably the best game I've seen him play in Seawolves' colors. And then big moments, big players. He stood up and was outstanding. Um, Wow. I mean... They haven't lost a playoff, a finals game. They're six and six, which is kind of daunting going into this final against New York. But and they, they probably run into their stiffest competition they've faced in the finals thus far. They are the hot team. They're the hot hand. They're playing well. They were supposed to wilt in the hundred degree temperature, you know, traveling down too. And right out of the gate, the mishap, the long tribe from Houston to get up on seven zip. Man, they just came roaring back and they just destroyed them. It was just, it was utter dominance, Brian. Yeah, between Alatimu and Duncan Matthews, I mean, they just tore up that field. That's two weeks in a row they did that. It was also against San Diego. So both of those guys are just in ridiculous form. Uh, and I, it almost looked like Houston were, were, were feeling the, the effects of that heat a little bit more than Seattle were, which is I didn't expect that at all. And I just thought Houston kind of put themselves too much into their shell in that game. It was box kicks all day from, from Dylan Smith, and it just didn't work out. The chase wasn't there. And when to, once you give Matthews any kind of space, you saw what he could do. It was just ridiculous. Unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, I mean, credit to Seattle. I didn't see that coming either, and they blew him out of the water. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are saying, oh, well, we didn't get to see L.A. or the, or the Gilgronies out of Austin play, and this is not. But, you know, let's not forget that Seattle went into the Coliseum in Los Angeles and beat Los Angeles with basically half their team and Los Angeles needing to win that match. You know, and Houston was the qualified third seed, and they just smoked them. They absolutely smoked them. So, this is a Seattle team that New York needs to be very wary of. And now we could talk, let's go to the New England and let's go to that Eastern Conference final, Dan, with the Flopjacks, no, the Free Jacks and New York. Great game and a, a lot to be said. I think, we, you know, we talked about it with Andy a little bit. Just the experience, that big game experience there. New England got out to a lead, but first time in the playoffs for them and you could see maybe the, the lights were just a little bit too bright. I thought the New York defense was absolutely outstanding. It's the best they've defensively looked 
all year, the right time of the year to be finding that. And no surprise, Milner Scudder is come into this, and Andy even mentioned it. At that 15 role, you can see him talking and communicating to his defensive line, getting the structures set, identifying threats. So he was always identifying where Bodie Walker was, and they nullified, you know, arguably player of the year uh, with a bullet and Bodine Walker. They, they nullified him in the second half and, and got the, and deserved the win too. They were the better side. I've heard some folk from New England area complaining about the refereeing. Well, let me tell you, there's a few games this year where they got the rub of the green. So sucks to be you now. Wow. Yo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Woo. Dan, Dan and Fuego power, ladies and gentlemen. Brian? <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there might have been a couple calls in there, little quibbles, but – uh, for the most part, it was just an excellent competitive game. I mean, that brilliant tackle from Heighton that stopped uh, uh, Balakana from scoring in the corner. Then Conradi hits, uh, you know, Chivetta right at the end of the first half. There were two big plays that stood up for me. One was Antonio Cutie Cutie winning a turnover after LaRue Milan had made a huge line break. If that ball gets recycled, that's probably a free Jacks try. And the other one was Bowden Walker countering from his own end. And I think he just got a little bit of tunnel vision. All he had to do was chip over. I mean, Mike Petrie talked about it in the commentary. If he just puts that ball to the boot, it's down in New York's end. It's probably a, a free Jacks throw in. But even if not, you know, you're pinning New York back in there. And those two plays are big in that last quarter of the game. And uh, But, hey, it was a great game. Uh, I think uh, New York won fair and square. They played terrific. So I uh, have to give them credit as well. And really looking forward to this final now. New York's players really stepped up in a lot of different roles. And New England is, an, is, is a very good team. And that stadium is perfect. It's great. The atmosphere was unbelievable. Unfortunately for the New England fans, they didn't get the, the home team win. Yeah, you know, they might have neutralized Bodine Walker in the second half. But it still wasn't easy. And they knew going into this match that this is the one guy they didn't want to let beat them. And they and he, he still almost did. I mean, the guy is amazing. He is the amazing. MVP of the league in my eyes, yeah. without Hands without down. question. But you got a guy that hardly gets any talk is Brendan O'Connor of New York. This man looks like he comes out of a, an MMA match every single game. He's cut. He's bleeding all over the place. And Marty Veal coming out with what we might think are unconventional lineups that are working with Bonasso at four. Sometimes you've had all three of your hookers in at the same time. And you had Brakely and Tui Lomak coming off the bench. And Brakely got his 50th cap in MLR, by the way. And they had a nice presentation on the pitch for him after that. i got to give a shout out to the Free Jacks fans too who turned up. Quincy probably had one of the best atmospheres in Major League Rugby this year. Well done to the Free Jacks. They were the best team all year. But it was a phenomenal game. I did enjoy it thoroughly. Four times they played against each other. It's, it's a classic rivalry. That's Boston, New York. I mean, that's the one. You can remember when the Free Jacks first came up, they were playing at Union Point Stadium in those crazy old, you know, Rugby United jerseys that they had on the black and white ones they had. I mean... And to come from there to, to where we saw this past week, it was just, uh, I mean, what a great game. It really was one of the best games of the season. Played at a, a great standard. I think anybody watching that from any, uh, you know, rugby corner of the, of the world could watch that and respect the standard of play. They wouldn't say, ah, oh, there's a bunch of, you know, beer league guys throwing at it. No, this was high quality rugby. I mean, some of those tackles were, were just phenomenal. So, uh, yeah, great, great standard of rugby. I'm really glad that it turned out the way it was, the way it did. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll come back with our predictions been blind since I was four and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label none of that stuff influences me I drink beer because of the taste and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon it has a taste and the flavor what do you think's on the label I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn jumping over fire That's good beer. And we're back with Dan Hank Williams uh, Power and Brian. I'm in Red Bull Arena, Ray. Guys, it looks like uh, this one's going to be a tight one. Maybe he's got Seattle coming across country to Newark, New Jersey, or Harrison officially, Dan. Yeah, we, we saw them uh, last year when they had that game against 
Toronto in Atlanta at the same time kickoff. Actually, I think it might have been an hour earlier. Uh, it wasn't at 11 a.m. Eastern. That's right. Yeah. It was midday. Like- if you're Seattle, yeah, what a hurdle. You just got to push it into the background. And, you know, those are the cards that have been dealt here. I think it's going to be a tough ask. So two, two big road trips week to week, Houston, and now headed. Um, you know, all the way to, to New York. Will, will Andrew Duratalo be making the trip? I mean, at last week he says. <laughs> <laughs> he might be on the John Madden Express. Yeah. I think the, they would have sent him the bus with the, the, the king size bed. You know, he's already on his way across country yeah. now. But listen, this sets up for a great final. It, it really does. And, you know, last year we just felt like LA were just going to be too much in, in Atlanta. <laughs> You know, we're just there to make up the numbers and kind of, you know, that, that's the way LA were just classing that final. Like the way Seattle have been playing, again, to me, it's the star power on New York, the experience, the Ellis. What a finish for this guy too, who probably never would imagine, like Brian said, in 2008 playing for the Satyrs against the Tars, that he would finish his career in a championship in New York at Red Bull Arena, playing for New York against Seattle in, in America. Do I have to pick a winner in this yes. one or can I just enjoy this? I think New York by one. Wow. Okay, you know, Sam, Sam Windsor to kick a penalty at the death, down by two, they'll win by one. And you bring up Sam Windsor with those unbelievable conversion kicks Windsor. under that enormous pressure with the New England fans going crazy heckling him. Mm-hmm. And he nailed those two kicks to solidify that win. This is such a weird final. I and mean, this isn't like any other final we've seen. If you think about it, Seattle were kind of the number four seeds in the West, and New York were number three coming out of the East. It's not like we have the two big powerhouses or something going together. So, uh, you know, that makes it a compelling matchup in itself. Uh, I, I think the, the difference makers, obviously, for Seattle are, are, are J.P. Smith and A.J. Alatimu. I mean, you can say Matthews as well, but I think it's those two halfbacks that really control the game. Uh, Smith's kicking off his left boot is just, I mean, that's a, a game changer right there. But, I mean, on the other hand, obviously, Andy Ellis and Jack Heighton over there are no sledges themselves. So, But I think those two guys would be key for Seattle. For New York, I think it's really uh, the pack and the depth they have. The guys they can – to bring a guy like Nate Brakely in off the bench is crazy. Even if he starts and they have Chivetta on the bench, whatever configuration they have in those forwards, they're going to bring on props and a whole new front row that you got to deal with in that last quarter. And I don't think Seattle quite has that. And that's where that fatigue from the travel really uh, makes a difference. So that last 20, I think, uh, will go to the New York forwards, and that'll be the difference in this one. So I'll take by New York by like five points in this one. Kalolo Tuiloma coming off the bench and just smashing people with ball in hand as the tight head for New York. Mayhew is another guy that's underestimated. He just looks like he catches cement blocks for a living. The trick for New York, though, if everybody's healthy, is working in the international slots. I think that's why you're seeing Benasso at number four rather than at number six or number seven. Whether Ed Fido's healthy enough to play, but Andrew Coe, your, your fellow Canadian, he stepped up and had some match. I'm with Dan. I think this is going to be a squeaker. I think it's going to be a two, three point game and, you know, just great match. But I think New York with the home field advantage will take this. It's going to be a very physical match. That's for sure. Final thoughts, guys. Do you have room in the rugby wrap up suite there at Red Bull Arena for Brian Ray? One way ticket from uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Absolutely. The train. You, can you get a train from there? <laughs> train. I'll see if the dog sled will fire it up this week. <laughs> I think he can get one of those barges, right? That comes down, delivers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Why don't you? I don't feel as though it'd be a final if Arn wasn't there representing American Rugby News, like <laughs> live. Let's get it done. Brian, you got to go to it's, it's the Super Bowl of Major League Rugby. You got to come see down. What happens? Yeah. Crazier things have happened. All right. Okay. You're more than welcome to sleep on Steve's couch, Steve Lewis's couch. I thought you were going to you know, try to entice me down there. This is doing a whole lot for me there, Matt. So Brian Ray is coming here and Andy Ellis is retiring. Two breaking stories right here on MLR Weekly. Brian, did you have a final thought? I'd like to see eventually where we get to a spot where we can really make an event of this final. And I like this collegiate shield uh, idea that they're putting together for the top prospects. I think that'd be a super fun thing to have. Either have some kind of an all-star game of players who aren't playing or have that collegiate match beforehand as like a curtain raiser of all the next talent that will maybe come in. I think that would get a lot of eyeballs and just be make a really big event of it so yeah something to look at in the future but uh at the moment we're just going to enjoy this one this weekend and my final thought kind of piggybacks that you have to establish the championship venue before the season kicks off it's got to be determined because fans have to know where to go you think we're there you think we're there where fans will travel to a neutral venue you gotta you don't you you don't have you're not gonna know if you keep doing this we did vegas and no one turned up for that 
magic weekend in Vegas. That was absurd. That was absolutely absurd. A ridiculous yeah, pitch in, in February where it's freezing in Vegas and everybody keeps I thinking think it's hot out and it's warm out. If we do if we do that, I think you've got to tie in Brian's thing. I think you do the collegiate field, you do a combine on Friday. Absolutely. And then from that, you pick a team that plays Saturday as a curtain raise. The championship has to be on Saturday. Can't have this. Is it Saturday? Is it Sunday? We don't know what we're doing. Um, pick a date, put it in there, pick a venue, book it and then build an event around it. Absolutely. So then you get all the college kids, their families come in, they get a ticket to the championship, and then it's Give them all free beers. Oh, wait, they're in college. They're college, College. 21. Nobody nobody drinks beer in college. Nobody does that. No, and we're not condoning that. And maybe I would change it from a shield. I would change it to a cup or a a bowl so you can actually take it around like the Stanley Cup and have stories. A luge. You could do like a drinking luge out of the shield. It's a little bit... It's a little bit weird. Dan Power, thank you. Brian Ray, thank you. Andy Ellis and the Ellis family, thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in. Please check out our other shows, including the Rugby Odds, our college rugby wrap-up. Please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Sign up for our weekly newsletter. And please, please, please sign up for our American Red Cross blood donor team.